All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are watching episode three of Peaky Binder season five. Last episode was really stressful. Um, let's do a quick little recap, then go straight into the next episode. To start off the episode, we have Tommy who stares out the window and notices something in his yard. It turns out to be a scarecrow with a letter attached. Basically, the letter just tells him to look down at the ground and there are mines everywhere. So <laughs> it gets a little scarier when um, his son Charlie comes outside and tells him that there's a call. And he just bursts out running into the field that Tommy is where all the mines are. Panicking, Tommy runs straight to Charlie and luckily none of the bombs detonate. So he tells him to go back inside and he'll call whoever's on the phone back. And Tommy goes back out into the minefields and blows up all the mines that are around the Scarecrow. And that is the first sign of trouble that we get this episode. When Tommy finally makes it back home, he calls back the person who called originally. And it turns out to be the IRA giving, them, giving him intel about Michael. Apparently he's making some sort of arrangements and deals and stuff with people that Tommy isn't working with and that is obviously a red flag they ask him if he wants them to kill him and of course tommy says no and to send him back home and this is where we're going to fast forward all the way to the actual meeting with michael and this is where it gets a little hectic so polly and arthur are the ones to intercept michael first and he brings his wife who's pregnant with his baby we'll get more into that later until when they have their second meeting but polly is not really interested in any of that she just wants to figure out exactly who michael spoke to and she just wants to know the truth and Michael is very defensive. I understand why from the aspect of him being in disbelief that his family doesn't believe him. But in their defense, this is a major security threat. So I get both sides and Gina, his new wife is really interesting. And I don't really know how I feel about her yet, honestly. It feels like she's very, I don't know. I, I just don't like her vibe, honestly. Maybe that'll change. I'm just not used to her yet, but she seems like she's up to something bad. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, after the meeting, we then go back to the garrison and they they see Finn is sleeping at one of the booths and he's just, Finn is in his own little world right now, honestly. Um, he feels like he doesn't know his place or role in the Shelby family or as a Peaky Blinder like the rest of his family does. And that's strictly just because they don't want Finn to be in this world where, where he feels like he has to kill people anymore. Because right now, none of them have to do that. They have people to, their, to do that for them while they keep their hands clean. Or as Tommy put it, he is a general and generals don't get their hands dirty they send people to do their work for them and stuff like that so yeah it is but the, the thing is finn feels like he's not doing his share and i get it you know all his life he, he's seen his brothers and his aunt polly do what they need to do to make sure their company is successful and to make sure that everyone's comfortable you know all that stuff and Finn hasn't been doing that. And <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a really conflicting situation for him just because of the fact that he wants to be relied on and prove that he is a Shelby and you know, all this stuff. And he hasn't been given the opportunity yet. So that's with Finn. Now, moving on to the actual meeting with Michael and Gina again, but this time with Tommy. Tommy does he has no patience whatsoever with this whole ordeal he, he just wants to figure out exactly what's going on with michael is he compromised is he against him because right now he had well to tommy he had a bad dream about he in his dream there was a black cat and that's a bad omen for him and he he takes this as a sign that michael is trying to undermine him and take his crown and stuff like that but in the end after, hear, after hearing what Michael had to say, 
he does come to the conclusion that Michael is trustworthy. You know, he does believe Michael to an extent, at least. And um, this is where we find out also that Gina is pregnant. And yeah, again, I don't know the angle that Gina is playing. Maybe she's just a normal person who loves Michael. But it feels like there's more to that than just, you know, love. But anyways, I will keep her, you know, in my sights, but I'll, you know, wait until we figure out more about her. But up next, Abarama is confronted by the Billy Boys and it is really sad. It's, it's depressing. So pretty much they want to send a message to Tommy and the only way to do that is to have a live person to get their point across. And they decide to use Abarama's song Bonnie to do that. And they end up crucifying him and then shooting him, and then straight up just shooting him in the head. And that is going to be their message to send to Tommy and it is rough but anyways arthur and finn meet with um billy grade yeah it's a guy named billy grade and he and they're, they're going to be using him to rig football games and billy isn't really wanting to but of course he has to just because now he's being recruited by the peaky blinders and you don't really say no to the peaky blinders so this is in hopes to get more income to hopefully get back everything that they've lost. And now to the end where Abarama actually confronts, well, he goes to Tommy's house with Johnny Dogs and injured Johnny Dogs because he believes that Johnny Dogs is the one that gave their location to the Billy Boys. And this is actually where things get interesting to me because now it's a question of who's trustworthy not only with Michael but it looks like Tommy does still believe Johnny Dogs is on his side so I'm not really too um focused on that as much just because of the fact that I we know Johnny Dogs we've known him since you know see what season one so it's just like I genuinely believe that he has the best t Tommy's best interest at heart and he isn't a mole so I'm curious to see exactly how that's going to play out but anyways, Abarama is, he's revenge hungry and I completely understand why. He loved his son and we see a little glimpse of Charlie looking through the door and he's witnessing this whole thing and Lizzie comes outside and shoots, you know, warning shots in the air and tells him to take this shit somewhere else. <laughs> and that is basically where, well, and she also calls an ambulance for Abarama because his um, shoulder shattered or something and he needs medical attention. But aside from that, yeah, now that we're all caught up, let's get started on episode three. All right, for Patreon, we are gonna get started in three, two, one. Let's just pray. St. Hilda's Orphanage. All right. They about to get a visit from the Shelby's. Smoking right in front of nuns. You don't smoke in here. God, Nor aggressive. Language. Nor do we find fault in the innocent. Yeah, they're coming on strong. What do they want? I have a temper similar to the one described in that report. Yet unlike you, I wait until I'm matched in size. You had a child half black. You made a wash with a different soap. Oh my God. Mr. Shelby, your own sins are legend. Our sins against the beating of children. With bricks and houses. Bricks and oh my god. Our sins. <laughs> Against the black child who hanged herself for fear of your temper. Oh my god. I do not see how. Oh. And put them on. Holy shit. Yo! Please don't imagine that I won't use this minute to do it. They are an intimidating pair, Polly and Tommy together. Oof. You see the world broken. Oh, that's, oh I like that. Beaten children will. Wow. Now look at me. Look at me! Funding withdrawn. Oh. <sighs> All 
children to be taken into our own institutions. You have no say in where the children go. If I come for you, Ooh. and I still might yet decide to come for you. Tell her, Polly. I will wear high heels so you can hear my approach on the couple stairs and have time to repent. Uh, that, that, that has to be my, my favorite opening yet. That was great. Happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday, Polly. She did that on her birthday. I just realized that. <laughs> a week ago, one of our most trusted men was killed by Jimmy McAvlin. The man we're going to speak to in London is establishing a relationship with Jimmy McAvlin. So Jimmy McAvlin. Oh, he leads the... Okay. That's what women do. The Billy voice. There is a strategy in place to avenge the death of his son. Good. To do anything rash. Thank God. Condolences of the whole family. Why me? But I'm a girl who's in love with you. And the smell oh. of your perfume might help ease his pain. Tommy, I'm 45 years old today. 45 years old. 45. To Polly. Polly To Polly. You can smile. You don't smile. Send him in. I never seem to get to meet you without your family. <laughs> I do not like this guy. Oh my God. Making approaches to various men across the country. Who you think I might be able to help you? McCavern is one of these men. I want to know what your strategy is. Or oh, Jesus. That one's your brother. Yes. You would like to talk business. Michael. Michael you... Gray. You lost all your cousin's money in America. Oh god, he better play this game. Jesus a Christ. Fuck you, Mosley. Called the gladiator as your regular. Jeez. And poor old Arthur Shelby standing there at the window is afraid his wife will never return. My spies tell me she's been seen with another man. Whiskey Suriso, though. <laughs> 20 seconds in, and I have them speaking their walk lingo. I have need of men like you. Except, of course, there is no other man like you. Don't imagine I would trouble myself with turf wars. You have many enemies. Shuffle the pack and pick another card. Next time, bring only an open mind and a cigar to celebrate our union. Fuck you, Mosley. Oh, Arthur is going to be furious. Yeah, he and Linda are going to have some issues this season. Oh, man. All right, Linda, what are you up to? I don't trust your ass no more. I don't. <laughs> Want to drink? I've stopped. I've been talking to the friends. Quakers, friends who meet at the meeting house in Bourneville. To divorce a Shelby man, you have to go to a solicitor in London. And yep, I knew it was going to be divorce. He said he'd represented me. The phone down. I chose this life. See, one of the friends is a man. He listens to me when I talk. Man. Daughter, you're considering making his daughter an orphan. He would die without his eyes. Yeah, they're stuck, I feel like. It's just... Arthur in you and me you don't get what you deserve you get what you take I love Lizzie man oh she has some good ass lines he's making up his mind yeah poor Abarama I, I hope he gets the revenge that he's looking for but I don't think he's going to be, be able to get even close to, to these people To the clinic. Dana. Oh my husband or no one. But if you get in a taxi in this city and they hear your accent, they'll take you on a grand tour. <laughs> Again, I just can't find myself to like Gina right now. Ugh. Carl is growing up, man. Jeez. At school, some of the children say that black people and Jews are worse. Ask them what? Than anything. Jesus. Take my. I think I don't want you to be my dad. Because my dad's white. And he's in heaven. Oh, God. Hoping we're not going to go down that route, but I'll just wait and see what happens. And let Tommy deal with the men who killed your son. I'm 45 today. Oh, wow. He remembers. I'm probably a bit older than that. Probably. <laughs> Happy birthday, Polly Gray. 
Oh, I love them as a couple, man. Oh. They would have made a great ass couple. Get a car and a driver. Find out where the Fury family are camped. Oh, don't go alone. No. Abarama, I swear to God, if you die because of you're being reckless, I'm going to be so angry. I decided to tell you she'd be light. You knew I'd be here? Yeah, we knew you'd be here. Here's some business for you. Any business I have with you, Mr. Shelby, is meant to be strictly confidential. Yeah, Marco, come find Carl. Buy him an ice cream. Hey? <laughs> Fuck you, Tom. Oh, here we go. You know, Gina Farm. Baby's heart's beating strong. By the time that baby draws his first breath, you and I will be done. <laughs> oh, here we go. There's no proof of sedition in this letter. You work in intelligence, younger. You don't need proof. Give it to your superiors. Oh, okay. Now let's see what's going on. You know what Lanzi represents. I could fight him on my own if I have to. Or I could join his organization and undermine him on behalf of the king. My thing is, I think he's already going to have to have um, accounted for that. Mosley seems like a ridiculously smart person and very resourceful. It's not going to be that easy as to just, I'm going to undermine this guy. <laughs> I suppose there are a few things I can do on my own initiative. That, okay, that house looks terrifying at night. Going to be Lizzie drinking in there. I'm your fucking fate. Hello, Tom. What the? I thought you were standing over in London. How are you? What the fuck? How are your ribs? Is it Maisie? Or... Please, is it Francis? I'm gonna laugh if it's Francis. Uh, oh, okay. Was it asking me yet? Breakfast. Got a great improvement. He said Avarama wants you to know that he's gone to Scotland to deal with his business himself. Uh, Did you know what that meant? Yep. No one listens. from the hospital. And Polly's Bentley. Sit in a car with Arthur and follow the patron to find the Fury family. Arthur will take care of everything that requires bones and muscles. I want <laughs> The gods will be the death of one of us. And it looks like it's going to be fucking me. Mom. Open it. A weapon. It's like a weapon. <laughs> I only came because Michael's driving back from London and he said he didn't want you to be on your own. Michael hmm. wants you to come with us. Oh, wow. We can all live in Long Island, right on the beach. It's in New York. I see you all try and get away. I'm an American. We don't just go round and round and round. We go in a straight line. And my baby will be born in New York. Oh, Lord. Again, this Gina character. Hey, Jesse. I'm happy to see her again. Besides you, you and you and your train fire, you hate London anyway. We're looking for popular speakers for our upcoming rally. <laughs> Revolution. I wonder how many times it took them to get that shot. <laughs> Fascism is the subject of the rally. I want you to speak against it. I cannot oh. address your rally. Yeah. Because it's not part of the current strategy. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Grace. I love how she's like the act of his conscience. Oh. So I've decided to continue to take the payment and balance my heart against my head as though it were a book of accounts. Hmm. My head of shame now. Lizzie is such an interesting character to me. Not the last time. You have to worry about shillings. Oh, man. Jeez. Linda was here today. Oh, fuck. What did she say? Huh? First, I need you to go to Scotland and bring back Abraham Gold. Then we'll go and we'll find Linda. Yo, 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 yo. Oh. Do what you told me. What did you know? I don't have an address. But you know <sighs> what is important for me. Follow me. There is someone who is a friend. He had a wife who died. The fact that Mosley knew this, Just Jesus. Get a message to Linda. Nothing happened, Arthur. He's a 
the Quaker who was a friend and not like us. They talk. I won't speak to him. Mm. He's gonna kill this man, and he has a child. Oh my lord. Another person <laughs> that's not listening to him. <laughs> Man, it's just a trend this season. No one listens. Who was he talking to? Was it Arthur? I think my brother had one piece. Arthur makes his own decisions. Marry or shall be. You stay fucking married. Fuck. If you're her husband, she doesn't want to talk to you. Oh. Uh... Jesus. God, man. Honestly, like, you know, I, I, I'm going to save it. <laughs> Actually, how long do I have left? 13 minutes. On the, like, I don't like Arthur anymore. Like, if he goes to fucking jail or whatever, if he dies this time, okay. Well, I'm a fucking good man like you. Fuck him. I'm over it. There's no redeeming Arthur. He has no I'm redeeming cause there, anymore. He's he's ruined. Off. He's broken. You can't fix and this. Yeah, you fucked this up too. Good job. Like I, I, God, fuck, man. I'm He's so f mm. Petrol. We need petrol. So far up north, they run out of the bloody stuff. Hi, Curly. Curly <laughs> Arthur is going to Scotland, so he needs hand grenades. How many? For sake, it's like it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can make me feel better, Curly. <laughs> Those the Billy Boys, yeah. Abarama, good luck. I I hope Gentlemen. you do well, but gypsies, Catholics, and other criminally minded individuals are not allowed to walk the roads of our Protestant district. He about to get shot in the back of the head. So, my own boys will uh. be from here. I have the keys. Kill their asses. Get your revenge, Abarama. There's a bullet, and on it is carved the name McCavin. And when the time comes for his crucifixion, it will be me who drives in the nails. Oh, the tar. Oh, damn. Oh, wait. And that went into his mouth. Ugh. Two months ago, I was in Rome. I met Mr. Mussolini. You and I and men like him. It will shape the future. When will you resign from the Labour Party? The day before I announce the formation of my new party. The British Union of Fascists will be born on January the 1st of next year. Oh, God. I've agreed to work with our friend. He's going to announce on January 1st. I need to know that my position as informant against him is officially sanctioned. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. We're venting outside. The engine running. We got two minutes to get out of here. You're seeking a man by the name of Where are the grenades Rome? that Arthur had? And a gentleman over and no one else will be harmed. He he's gonna blow up that whole camp. Yep. Fuck, take cover. Woo -wee. It's what you want. It's what you shall have. <laughs> oh God! All right, that that ending made me feel a lot better. <laughs> Cause let me tell you, that whole scene with Arthur killing that man, I, uh, I wish I can like I could like Arthur. I, I, like I, I'm trying my best to find a redeemable quality about him now and it's so hard it's just like he's just 
fallen so far from what I originally liked him. I understand he loves Linda. It's, it's very clear that he does. And obviously her looking to get out of their marriage is going to be painful for him. And okay, but oh my God. Like, I don't know. There, there are just so many things with Arthur that I hoped he would have fixed. Like when he found Linda in the very beginning, everything, I loved it. Everything about him, everything he wanted, it was clear. He had a child. He, you know, he, he was level headed. Everything that he was doing felt right. And I feel like where things started to go wrong was obviously the death of John. And he flipped that switch off and he started being more dangerous than he was even before everything, you know, like, man, it's, it's, it's a really rough, it's a, it's a really rough, um, time for me when it comes to trying to side with Arthur. And maybe that's the point, right? Maybe I'm not supposed to like Arthur, right? Maybe that was the writer's goal this whole time, and I was just wrong, you know? I'm hoping that's the case because, like, again, like, my patience with Arthur is out. I can't just sit there and be like, Arthur, go get him, Arthur, because, like, he didn't deserve that. And obviously, I don't think Linda deserves to be with somebody like Arthur if he's going to act this way. Um, of course, Linda has her faults and she's not perfect. I'm not even going to pretend to act like I fully appreciate her character and I like the way, and I like how she acts or anything like that. Cause sometimes she's just over, she goes overboard as well. And honestly, maybe that's what makes them so compatible or <laughs> maybe that's what he thinks is what makes them so compatible. But it's just like, man, it's just. He has zero self-control. His anger gets the best of him. It gets the better of him. Mosley, I'm really like, I still have the same thoughts thought about Mosley as I did in episode two. And it's just like, I don't, <laughs> it's, I feel like with, you know, <laughs> fucking Campbell and Father John, they were both sexually abusive, <laughs> one to women and the other one to fucking children. So it's just like, when you go from that to Mosley, it feels like, honestly, it's, it's a breath of fresh air just because he's a normal villain. <laughs> you know, he, he feels like a normal antagonist that you would meet in this kind of world. I mean, yeah, I don't really have that much to say about this episode, apparently. I, I don't want this to turn into a, um, an Arthur rant or something like that. You know, I... There's a lot of people I'm not liking in this season. It's, it, well, again, it's, it's not the writing or anything like that. It's just the characters. They're so annoying. <laughs> like Gina, I do not like Gina at all. And I don't like the way she talks to Polly. Maybe that's why I don't like her that much. It's just, it's just because I know that she doesn't respect Polly. Um, and again, it's the bias in me because I love Polly's character to death. And I, it's just like... When I see the way Gina looks at her and the rest of, you know, the Shelby family and how she talks to Polly, especially in that one scene with, um, with her giving Polly her present and stuff like that, it just gave me the worst taste in my mouth. And I, ooh, <sighs> Lizzie, I still love my girl, Lizzie. <laughs> I love her to death. But anyways, Abarama started getting his revenge. I am completely on team Abarama when it comes to him facing the Billy boys. I want him to get the revenge. I hope he doesn't die in the process. You know, I don't think Bonnie deserved it. And obviously Abarama doesn't deserve any of this. So hopefully he comes out unscathed and he's able to retire after this because he did mention to Polly that this was going to be his final kill. And I'm hoping that he's able to just leave. But I don't, again, with this show, I'm not going to count that as a, as a sure possibility, as a hundred percent, you know, chance. And it's just going to be a, a possibility. Woo. This thing, this season is on fire though. Like in, in terms of 
emotion this season is giving me everything that i want you know i don't want a cakewalk of the season of course so i'm glad that this season is giving me all this emotion and it's giving me you know everything that's making me you know dislike characters and you know because like if you're if you're in that emotionally attached to a show then you're doing something right for it you know that show is doing something right for you and clearly they know what they're doing so yeah oh and carl carl looks he is growing up like i did not think he would look so grown so fast but again we're, we're doing some major time skip time skips here so it's it's understandable you know he's he appears to be a little racist <laughs> But um, I'm hoping that he'll start warming warming up to the fact that um, that younger is just a different tone, skin tone, and that's it. And uh, I, I don't want a racist in the Shelby family, <laughs> especially from you know a new generation, you know, because like every everyone in the Shelby family so far is is tolerant of pretty much everybody you know different times and stuff like that but i would love to see them be more progressive obviously they have you know they, they do have you know morals especially with that opening that they did with um with the abuse of nuns thank god that was the again that was the absolute best opening to peaky binders yet i don't think that they're going to be able to top that one like at all i will stand behind that that was great to me but um anyways Feel free to check out the Patreon. Most likely we are going to be done, of course, <laughs> with the whole season. And we're going to be moving on to different shows and movies so and, and different animes. So, of course, check out the full length episodes and whatever else we have to offer over there. But aside from that, everyone, you have a great day slash night and I will see you next time. Subscribe.